Hi, we're going to be telling you about our experiment which was to do with induction. I'm Elizabeth and this is Sebastian. So we're going to start with a little bit of history. Induction was first discovered by Ersted. He was actually giving a public talk and he had a piece of wire and he had a strong current flowing through it and he moved nearby with a compass and he observed that the compass needle was actually deflected. And so he concluded from this that when you have a current flowing through a piece of wire, you actually get an induced magnetic field associated with it. Now, Faraday discovered that kind of the reverse is also true, and that if you have a changing magnetic field, you actually get an induced current as well. So Faraday's law can be written this way, where that epsilon represents the induced EMF, so the voltages that we were measuring in our experiment, and it's proportional to the, any change in phi over a ch change in time. So phi is the magnetic flux. It's equal to the magnetic field strength times the cross-sectional area, so BA. So any induced EMF is proportional to the change in flux with time. So Lenz then developed this a little bit further. He showed that when you have that induced EMF, the induced EMF actually has to oppose the change that induces it. So this is where the negative sign comes from in this equation. The induced EMF opposes the change. So for example, in, in this diagram where you're moving the North Pole into this um, coil here, that's going to induce an EMF in the coil which will start a current flowing and you'll actually end up with a North Pole on this end of the coil here which will, in, which will oppose this North Pole entering it. So Lenz's law can be written as minus n, where n is the number of turns, change in the magnetic flux over the change in time. Okay, we're also going to have a bit of a look at transformers in this experiment. So transformers make use of Lenz's law and Faraday's law. In a transformer, you input an alternating current on, on one side. So on the primary side, you're inputting an alternating current. And that alternating current, because it's a constantly changing current, creates a constantly changing magnetic field. And the constantly changing magnetic field can travel through the transformer coil here. So you have a constantly changing magnetic field in the secondary coil here. And that induces a voltage or a current in the secondary coil. So it's been shown for transformers that the number of turns in the primary coil over the number of turns in the secondary coil is proportional to the change in voltage in the primary over the change in voltage in the secondary. So you put the voltage into the primary coil and then you get it out on the secondary coil and that's equal to the change in current in the primary over the change in current in the secondary. And this can be really useful for things like power transmission where you want to change the voltage. So it's actually why we end up using AC power rather than DC power in everyday life because it's much easier to transform AC power than DC power. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to Sebastian now and he's going to tell you a bit about our basic and our standard experiments. So in the first part of our experiment, in the basic one, we um, performed the following. We had three different tubes. We had an aluminium tube that was completely closed. We also had a PVC tube out of plastic. And we had the same aluminium tube as before, but with a cut down in the center. And that cut down in the center was very important because what we suspected, our hypothesis was that when you drop magnets through the coils, uh, through, the, through the tubes, that will induce a current inside the tube. And if you've got the two metal tubes, you will definitely have currents induced in them. But if you've got a cut through the center of one of the um, tubes, the current can't go all the way, so the current is basically stopped. And therefore, our hypothesis was that when you drop a magnet through the aluminium tube, it should drop really slowly, because the induced current, due to Lenz's law, will oppose the motion of the magnet inside of it. And dropping it through the PVC tube should be the fastest, because in plastic, you have, can hardly induce any you know, eddy currents. And the aluminium tube is a cut through the center. That should basically just be between the two. And um, these are our um, um, results. 
as you can see, we measured the time dropping the magnets all through the three tube, tubes, all from the same height. We dropped them five times. And as you can see here, in the plastic tube, we've got the average time is much smaller than for both of the other tubes. And the uncertainty is also much, much smaller. So what we can basically conclude from our um, experiment is the magnet velocity inside the plastic tube is much larger than inside the metallic tube with the slit. And then the slowest one is the solid metallic tube that doesn't have, have um, the cut through the, through the center. And the uncertainties in this exercise are basically due to yeah, human error and air resistance. And one of the improvements that we suggest would be using an optical sensor to make sure that you really stop the times correctly and everything. And then in our um, standard experiment, we um, wanted to measure transformer efficiency. So we set up the following. We've got an AC power supply here. And then we've got a transformer core, as Liz showed in um, the theory as well. We've got an iron core here at the, um, the center. And on both sides, we can put on different amounts of um, coils. So we've got a primary and a secondary coil. And we can change the ratio between the two. And we put a certain AC voltage into the primary coil. And then we measured what we, with a logger pro, what we get out of the secondary coil. And then we could do follow the following. We could either open up the top of the transformer so that we've got an open transformer. Or we could sort of change the material inside the core of the transformer and see if that has an effect of the efficiency of the transformer. And what we basically did, we calculated the power that goes into the system, and we then measured, using P is equal to V times I, the um, power that we got out of the system. And um, this is our, our graph. That is the data that we've recorded. As you can see, on the um, y-axis, we plotted the efficiency in percent, con um, co basically converting or calculating what we put in against what we got out. And then you can see here that the efficiency is the highest when we've got the closed O, when the transformer is completely closed, and the magnetic field can travel all the way around. And then you can also see the efficiency is the lowest when we basically have the open um, transformer, the open core. And that means that you basically have the magnetic field can't really close the loop and you lose a lot of, this, uh, of the energy or the power that you put in. And we couldn't really see a difference between the two different cores if it was linear laminated or linear non-laminated. And that is what you can see on this graph as well. And please note that all um, the values on here have a, a roughly 7% uncertainty on all of these values. And so in, in our extension experiment, we were looking at Faraday's law. So what we did was we dropped magnets from different heights. And when we drop them from different heights, it means that they've got different speeds when they enter the coil here. So if they've got different speeds, then we've got different, um, the delta phi on delta t will be different because the magnetic flux will be changing more quickly when the magnet's going faster. And so we, we did this, and what we plotted was the induced EMF versus the drop height. And this actually came out as we expected, because as the, the drop height increases, the velocity increases. So the velocity is actually proportional to the, the square root of, of the drop height, which you can tell from the kinematic equations, the v squared equals u squared plus 2as, and there's no velocity to start with. So v squared is equal to 2as, where s is the drop height. So you can see that we, we did have the induced voltage here as proportional to the, the square root of the drop height, which is what, what we would expect. So yeah, that was our experiment. Does anybody have any questions for us about any part of it? Okay, thanks guys. Yes, thank you. <laughs>